Hi, Assalamu alaikum and good morning everyone. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdurrahim here with you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. I can see that the new subscribers are coming in and you guys are watching the videos. Thank you for that. And also please feel free to write if you have any questions or any comments, okay? So let's move on to our topic. We are continuing our aortic stenosis topic. And in the last vlog, I explained you about the 2D and M mode parameters. In today's vlog, we are going to discuss mainly about the uh, Doppler parameters in aortic stenosis patient. Uh, Doppler is a very, very important um, aspect in aortic stenosis patient. In other words, you can say that the most important parameter in aortic stenosis patient is the Doppler. Because if you can, if you know how to understand the Doppler, how to get a signal of the Doppler and how to read that Doppler, then you will be very good in diagnosing the aortic stenosis patients, okay? So in today's vlog, I will just tell you that uh, what type of Dopplers we use, how we should use them, how they use, how they work. And then in the next vlog, I will show you on the machines or in one of the study, like how you should be getting the Doppler, okay? So... If we, if we move on to the Doppler, in ECHO we mainly use color Doppler, pulse wave Doppler and continuous wave Doppler. So in uh, aortic stenosis, the main Doppler which we are going to see is the continuous and the pulse wave Doppler. Uh, you can, just, anyone who is a student or very new into the ECHO, uh, the pulse wave Doppler is the one that once you press the PW button on your machine, you see a cursor comes in with a markup is equal to in the middle so that's known as uh, pulse wave doppler and the continuous wave doppler is the one that once you put the cursor in you see a line or in the previous machines you were having a, a diamond mark in the middle of the line that tells you that this is a, a continuous wave doppler or C, uh, cw so in pulse wave doppler simply if you go in, I would not like to go in deep physics, but simply you should know that there is only one crystal is being used in pulse wave Doppler, which uh, works both as a sender and as a receiver. So first it transmits a signal and then it works as a receiver to receive the signal. Okay, so only one crystal is being used in pulse wave. So that's why there is a delay in the um, uh, pulse, uh, pulse wave and then there is a Nyquist limit. What is Nyquist limit? Nyquist limit is the highest velocity we can achieve by using the pulse wave Doppler, okay? So that's why there is a Nyquist limit. So you can't uh, get the highest velocities through pulse wave Doppler. The use of pulse wave Doppler is mainly to acquire the low velocities and also to get um, a velocity of a certain or a specific area. For example, you want to get a velocity of mitral valve, pulmonary veins, LVOT, these are the small velocities. So if you want to get those velocities, you will use the pulse wave Doppler. But if you're, if the velocities are increased at that point due to any reasons, okay, then you will see aliasing. Okay, what is aliasing mean? Aliasing mean that the velocity you are obtaining has increased the Nyquist limit, has increased the maximum limit of your velocity. Okay, so you can't get it with the pulse wave. You will have to do the other parameters or you need to either change your scale or you need to shift yourself to the continuous wave Doppler. So this was a general idea about pulse wave. So what is continuous wave Doppler? In continuous wave Doppler, two crystals are being used. One is continuously sending the signal and one is continuously receiving the signal. Okay. So in this way, uh, the, the benefit of the continuous wave is that you can get the higher velocities by uh, continuous wave Doppler. There is no limit and there is no Nyquist limit in continuous wave Doppler. So you can get it and that's why there is no aliasing. You can just change the uh, scale and you will, uh, you can, uh, you know, you can uh, cope up with the aliasing. So the, uh, you know, I would say that the drawback of the CWA is that you, you cannot understand that where this velocity is arising from. You need to just understand looking at it but you can't get it from the signal that this velocity is coming from this specific area, okay? It just gives you the velocity, highest velocity underlying all the objects, okay? So you just need to understand by USF like where this velocity is arising from by using the color Doppler and seeing the aliasing, okay? So this is the continuous wave Doppler. So these two Dopplers you are using in the, in the echo, mainly in the assessment of uh, aortic stenosis. So now what you are going to do in aortic stenosis, 
first of all you need to get the peak and mean gradient of the aortic valve okay by using the continuous wave doppler and uh, you will you will use the continuous wave doppler either in uh, apical 3 chamber apical 5 chamber or um, high parasternal long axis or right parasternal windows you will use these windows to get like wherever you are seeing a better signal you can just get it or the higher signal you will just get it once you will get that velocity i will show you in the next vlog once you get that velocity you will trace that velocity okay so it will give you a peak gradient a mean gradient and a vti peak gradient is you know you use this the modified bernoulli equation 4v square and it will give you the peak gradient mean gradient is the average instantaneous gradient okay uh, throughout that uh, ejection time and vti is the distance it tells you that how much distance blood has traveled during that ejection time okay so once you calculate once you trace that signal okay it will give you all three automatically the machine will give you okay but you need to be careful that you only need to trace that signal i will show you this in tips and tricks in next vlog but uh, this is how once you will trace that one you will get the uh, peak gradient mean gradient and also the vti so once you get all these things then you can also look at the heart rate of the patient always uh, i mentioned that once you are doing any stenosis patient and you are going to write about the gradients always mention the heart rate so for example you are going to report the aortic gradient you will say that peak mean gradient are for example uh, 40 by 20 at a heart rate of 60 65 so this is how you are going to report it always mention the heart rate in your report so this is your peaks uh, this is your peak mean gradient and now you come to the next one which is the aortic valve area so how you are going to get the aortic valve area we use continuity equation to uh, measure the aortic valve area what is continuity equation continuity equation i i think i explained this one in the previous vlogs when i was telling you about mitral regurgitation but simply continuity equation is that the flow which is coming in is equal to the flow which is going out so it means that the flow which is in lvot is equal to the flow which is in aorta so the aortic flow is equal to lvot flow how we can uh, calculate the flow flow means stroke volume okay flow is equal to stroke volume so stroke volume how you are going to calculate the stroke volume stroke volume is equal to cross sectional area into vti of the same area okay and then you know you can put the formula in cross sectional area pi r square okay and then you will add the vti uh, you will multiply with the vti and you will get the uh, lvot stroke volume so lvot stroke volume how you are going to get in the machine in almost every machine has this uh, data entered in it if you you just get the lvot diameter and lvot vti the machine will give you lvot stroke volume by the way the lvot stroke volume should be at every report whatever uh, uh, even even it's a normal scan or whatever disease it is it should be there the lvot stroke volume should be there on your report you always need to mention about, uh, you always need to measure your lvot vti and lvot diameter to get the stroke volume and machine will give you the stroke volume and you need to mention it on your reports okay this was something so you get lvot stroke volume now we were saying that lvot stroke volume is equal to aortic valve stroke volume now we uh, already solved this part of the equation we get lvot stroke volume because we get both things cross sectional area and vti we get both these things now we will come to the other side which is the aortic valve area so aortic valve area is um, uh, aortic valve stroke volume so aortic valve stroke volume is equal to aortic valve area into aortic valve vti so if we trace the aortic valve vti what i told you in um, in the three or five chamber once you put the cwo you just trace that uh, vti and you will get the aortic valve vti so you get that vti so now you have an equation which is aortic valve area into aortic valve vti is equal to lvot stroke volume we calculated the stroke volume so your aortic valve uh, vti will go from this side to the other side and it will get divided so your next formula will be aortic valve area is equal to lvot stroke volume or uh, uh, lvot vti into cross sectional area divided by aortic valve vti once you will calculate this one you will get the aortic valve area i will show you how to do it 
uh, manually because it can come into the exams in the next vlogs. But today I'm just trying to explain you the things that you should understand how you're doing it. Okay. By the way, very important thing which I forget for the LBOT uh, stroke volume. Once you are getting the LBOT VTI, you need to put your cursor at the same point where you are measuring your LBOT diameter, just about five to five millimeter to one uh, centimeter away from your aortic valve towards the LV side. Okay. Or when you put the color in, just try to keep yourself slightly above the aliasing. You will see the aliasing just close to the aortic valve. Just get slightly above the aliasing and you will get the proper LVOT VTI. Okay. This is very important because this can change the whole um, measurements. So you need to understand it better. Okay. So in uh, I think we are done with this. The, the main measurements of the Doppler. So you need to get the aortic valve area, you need to get the stroke volume and you need to get the, um, you know, peak mean gradient of the aortic valve. Okay. In the next vlog, I will show you how you are going to get these parameters, how you should use the Doppler, how is the shape of the Doppler and these all things in the next vlog. Okay. And then definitely we will discuss about this stroke volume because uh, aortic stenosis is divide into subgroups because of the stroke volume okay so we will go into it aortic stenosis is a slightly larger topic so please stay tuned and i'll see you in next vlog thank you bye bye